The bond between us, um, between Heidi and, and me, the bonds were there before Polytechnic. We were students together. Uh, we were not the best friends, but we were friends. We were involved together with students at Polytechnic. She was in the Polyscope. I was in the Association Étudiante. So we knew each other very well. But linked with Polytechnic, I can still remember when she was uh, interviewed by uh, Bernard de Rome, it was him, for Le Point. It was, no, it, it was, was not a reporter came to my reporter. residence room right there. Yeah, and, and I was listening at Heidi in my bedroom at the hospital, and I remember what she told, and I just said to me, oh, somebody has to tell the guys that they're not guilty, and that we were very, very, very well uh, received, well, um, welcomed at Polytechnic. And, uh, but she, she's the one who gave me the first uh, uh, swing <laughs> to, to, to talk to the media the day after, the, on, the 8th of, uh, on December 8th. I would say that what Nathalie said the ne that next day uh, on her bed and I listened to, helped me cope with what I had to do after. She, it, it, like, it gave me a kind of a wind in my sail. I said, oh, she's so right. I, I had to hear someone say something like that. And then when, on that very special night, I, I received a phone call, I think it was the next morning, from a, a friend, Micheline Bouchard. And she says, remember, Michelle, you met Jocelyne Negari last week. And she says, Jocelyne, just call to say, I'm there if you need me. I said, yes, I need her. I know she's good. And Jocelyne came. And I think that was one of the best decisions I ever took. Because since then, I didn't know, I had met her the week before. But then we, we shared so much. And, and uh, you can't live like that without having something special come out of it. And what she did at the end, because that was just not far before Christmas, she each gave us a candle, each one of us who was involved with the aftermath. And she made us promise to light it the day of Chris on Christmas Day so we would have this feeling of togetherness. You know what? I never lit it. I wanted to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can I one. still have it. No. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll find some some more for this very special anniversary. Um, I would say my my um, my link with with these women came from from the f very fact of tragedy itself. Uh, except for Michelle that I met uh, uh, a week before. Uh, I didn't know uh, neither Heidi nor Nathalie. I wouldn't have come to Polytechnic because I have a brain that is not big enough <laughs> to do such studies. <laughs> I, I studied literature and law. <laughs> Sorry for my colleagues. <laughs> but um, I, I wouldn't have uh, do that type of studies. And, and I certainly had certain biases, uh, and there weren't that many women, but I was strongly feminist, that's for sure. Um, and I did want to help, and, and what I did with Michelle, I found out how these people work, and how organized and, and, and strong they are, and how they can all together work mm. in a team and each one doing uh, the right thing. And I, I, I learned a lot uh, of, uh, about that with Michelle. And um, I didn't want to touch the money who came from that uh, tragedy, so we, we created the fund. But, but that solidarity, I mean, I mean I, it's because I, I, I fell in love with these women that I did that. Um, 
And your, your help? Uh, uh, yes, I, I needed badly to help Heidi. I, I wanted to be uh, part of them as a woman, and I think we always kept that very strong link, uh, which goes, strangely enough, beyond what you would call friendship. Or mm -hmm. it, It's a very unique type of link yeah, absolutely. That, that developed between us and it's a... Uh, and uh, so it, it's for sure that uh, Polytechnic is, is like a big family. Mm -hmm. And the link with the students and with the staff and with the teachers, it, I mean, it, the solidarity is incredible. It was there before the tragedy and it was reinforced because of the tragedy. And, uh, and it's still there today. You know, going, coming back here today, 25 years later, nothing changed. We're still a family. Um, but uh, with respect to Jocelyn, I think it's important to underline that a lot of things have happened since the tragedy. A lot of people have worked for change. Uh, people like me, Nathalie, uh, and the school representatives are high profile because of our work. But there's some people that are heroes that are behind the scenes. There's lots of them. Uh, but in terms of all the, the, the progress and now uh, recul, but we're still fighting, um, the, all the work that was done for gun control was in large part because of Jocelyn. And nobody knows that. Mm -hmm. Because Jocelyn, uh, she had, uh, I had met her because uh, she had created a bursary that both me and Nathalie were the first recipients of, so I had met her there. Uh, we had an instant connection and then and kept in touch. And then later, while I moved on, I had my, my, my first engineering job. I graduated. And at the same time, uh, the, 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 the whole uh, gun control, control petition that we had launched, um, and we had convinced the minister at the time to table legislation, and, and so at least we had done something, and we can move on with our lives, but that wasn't the case. Um, it, it, it blew up. It died on the order paper, and it was just a disaster and a slap in the face to the families of the victims who supported this, slap in the face to the whole uh, polytechnic community and every Canadian who believed in gun control. And, uh, but, you know, we were, I was a freshly graduated junior engineer at a big company. I wasn't allowed to use the phone during the day. Um, and then I'd get all these calls and like I couldn't do, I had worked on the petition, so I had, I had things to say and people to represent and people to meet and organize with people. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I had to work. And I think that's the case for most people who support gun control. And, um, and so I called Jocelyn and I said, and I think um, uh, the, her foundation continues mm -hmm. with the bursaries, and there's lots of bursaries, which is absolutely great. But I said, can you think about using your money, just for some of your money, for something different? Can you pay me, help me, mm -hmm. so I could be full time on gun control for six months, support, uh, and then we can we can launch a real movement for gun control, and six months turn into a year. I mean, more than we could hope for, logistic support and everything, and that's how the Coalition for Gun Control uh, was able to have its first employee, and that was me. <laughs> and everything, everything that went on, I mean, I, you know, I, I had said I, I would leave engineering for a year. It turned mm -hmm. out to be six years, and that 25 I- 25 now. <laughs> well, now 25. Of course, my career has changed a little bit, but um, so this is important to say, I think, and, and mm -hmm. people don't realize how important it is. And, I don't see Jocelyn very much, but she's, you know, every time I, uh, we, we work and we have some victories, we have a lot of setbacks, but, you know, everything. And, you know, the, the gun control law has, you know, by the most conservative estimates, even though now uh, there's a huge setback, uh, still saved thousands of lives, mm -hmm. at the minimum 300 lives a year. And that is a legacy that's, you know, these people will never know who they are. Uh, because it didn't happen, but we could, the trends are down, the, the scientists or researchers have assessed that prevention works, gun control works, and more people are alive today uh, than they would have been otherwise, and that's, your role is critical.